The year was 1263. The place, Bolsena, Italy, about 70 miles north of Rome. The priest, Father Peter of Prague. Father Peter was making a pilgrimage on foot from Prague in Eastern Europe to Rome to the tomb of his namesake, St. Peter, because he, like many Catholics, had received so many communions that he had begun to take the sacrament for granted. Sound familiar? Some of you have made hundreds and hundreds of communions, haven't you, <coughs> over the years. And the danger of these frequent communions is that we take our Lord in the sacrament for granted and receive our Lord unworthily even at times. So Father Peter, who was really losing his faith in the Eucharist, was making this pilgrimage on foot, and each day he would walk as far as he could make it to the next town where there was a church. He would stay there, and in the morning, the next morning, offer Mass before the next day's journey. And each day he would begin that Mass after a night of prayer for a renew, renewed faith. Well, here he was in Bolsena offering Mass, and as he prayed the prayer of consecration and lifted up the host, blood began to run from the host. And it fell down on the corporal, not a military personnel, but something we call the corporal, which is the cloth that you see here that we place on the altar. Corpore means the body. So the corporal is the altar linen that receives the body and blood of Christ from heaven to earth. And now his corporal on the altar was full of blood. You can imagine the eyes of Father Peter, who no longer had any doubt about what the Eucharist truly is and who the Eucharist is. And interestingly enough, at the neighboring town, a beautiful hill town called Orvieto, the popes at that time would have their summer residence. So Pope Urban IV was in the neighboring village of Orvieto, and a runner was sent from Bolsena to tell the pope about this extraordinary happening. Well, the pope, once he heard this, gathered his entourage and said, we're heading to Bolsena. Meanwhile, Father Peter and his entourage, with this miraculous cloth, now is making his way, and they meet halfway at a place called Ponte del Sol, or the Bridge of the Sun. And when the Holy Father was shown the corporal, he knelt down and said, this is a true miracle of the Eucharist. And to celebrate this miracle, which would definitely help those who had their doubts about the true presence of Christ in our midst, the Holy Father called for the writing of a mass to institute a feast day called Corpus Christi, Body of Christ. And he asked a young priest, a very devout young Dominican, to write the prayers and the songs for the Mass. You may have heard of him. His name was Father Thomas Aquinas. Yes, the patron of Catholic schools. The great St. Thomas is the one who wrote hymns like O Salutaris Ostia and the great uh, Pangilingua that we sing on Holy Thursday and at benediction, uh, the hymn with which we conclude. All of those written by St. Thomas. And so we've had this since about a year after that, 1264, to celebrate traditionally on the Thursday after Trinity Sunday. Thursday because that's the day of the Last Supper, right? Holy Thursday. So it was traditionally done on a Thursday, more recently transferred to Sunday so that more people could actually attend and celebrate this wonderful mystery. But you will have noticed, perhaps, that this past Thursday was the Feast of the Visitation of Our Lady, the 31st of May, it fell on that day. And I thought what an interesting divine providence that we reflect on both Mary's visitation and God's visitation. Mary, yes, to her cousin Elizabeth to bring the good news that a savior is now in her womb because of her yes at the Annunciation. But God 
also visiting you and me every time we come to the Eucharist. God visits us from heaven. God's going to visit you today. Now imagine the welcome that Elizabeth and Zechariah gave to Mary when she visited them. You know that rejoicing, what did Elizabeth say? Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Shouldn't we say that with a little variation? Who am I that the Lord should visit me today in the Holy Eucharist? Haven't we all taken Jesus for granted? I receive the Lord day after day, sometimes multiple times celebrating Mass. And there's a great danger, just as it was for Saint Peter, Father Peter of Prague, so it is for me and for all of us that we will take Jesus for granted. And when we do not open our hearts to him, Jesus who is love incarnate, then we've missed our visitation. God is passing by. And if we do not receive him, if the seed ground of our soul is not a welcoming place for him, then he continues on until someone will receive him. You say, but I received Holy Communion. Yes, but if you did not love him, if you did not acknowledge him, if you did not believe in him, that he truly is not a sign, not a symbol, but the living God come down from heaven for your soul, then you missed him. You missed him. You know, I've asked myself, Thousands of communions. Why am I not a better soul? Because you see, if we really believe Jesus is coming to us, then we should be transformed into his likeness. That's the uniqueness of this mystery. Every meal that you receive is transformed into you. Right? All of those vitamins and minerals and fatty acids and all the rest that you get. Right? It's turned into you. Not in the Eucharist. It's the one divine food that you will receive whereby you can be transformed into him. You are now fortified with his lifeblood, his love, to go out into the world and be Jesus for the world. Are you doing it? That's the question I have to ask myself. Jesus, who is love, wants to transform you and me into his likeness. Why is the world not better? Because we're not responding to the grace. That's my theory. So today, when Jesus comes to you, be transformed. Receive him, love him, thank him, praise him, glorify him. And then bring Jesus into the world. Make the difference by allowing Jesus to transform you. You heard in the readings today all about covenant, that blood that was placed on the altar with Moses. Abraham long before. Abraham and Sarah, when they were visited by God, remember they had that covenant where they took the animals, split them in two, parted them, and there was a river of blood running, and God said, that's how they made covenants. Between a kingdom and a kingdom, between a tribe and a tribe, they would make that covenant and they would walk in between the carcasses of the animals. What was the meaning? I'm taking a blood covenant with you. I will be faithful to you. I will be true to you. And if not, may I be split in two and my blood run like a river. That's what a covenant oath was. God made that covenant oath with us. And God is faithful. The question is, are we? Faithful to the covenant. Jesus finally made the final covenant. As it had been renewed over time, he made the final covenant on the cross when he shed his own blood and when he rose from the dead. Now he gave us the foretaste of that on Holy Thursday and every mass is as much a miracle as the miracle at Bolsena, only that it is veiled under the appearance of of bread and wine. It is the same body and blood of Christ. It is the same Jesus who died and rose again. And those who accuse us of being cannibals, you Catholics, you believe you eat the body and blood of Christ. You're cannibals then. No. When the cannibal kills the victim, that human being is dead. And they take that dead body. 
you and I receive the living body of Christ. For he rose from the dead. Jesus died and rose. And notice, in the consecration at the altar, we separate the consecration of the bread from the consecration of the wine. What do you do when you take blood out of a body? Death. Notice right before Holy Communion, when you come to receive your Lord, the priest takes a particle of the host and reunites it with the blood. What have you got? The resurrection. So you are receiving the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Truly, God and man, body and blood. This is who you receive. Do you believe it? Do you love him? He loves you infinitely. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. Open your heart to him today. When you come, try to remember your first Holy Communion and receive him like those sweet children did just a few weeks ago at their first Holy Communion. They were quivering with excitement to receive the Lord for the first time. It's the same Jesus every time. Whether the veil is lifted or not, by faith you know it to be true. So believe Live and be transformed in the blood of the new covenant. I conclude with these words from another of the great hymns of Corpus Christi called Laudation or Praise, O Zion. Here beneath these signs are hidden priceless things to sense forbidden. Signs, not things, are all we see. But blood is poured and flesh is broken. Yet in either wondrous token, Christ entire we know to be. Whoso of this food partakes does not rend the Lord nor breaks. For Christ is whole to all that taste. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Amen.